Jamaica has already been hit by Matthew. You see the flooding right there. And ABC's Gio Benitez is on the scene in Kingston. Good morning, Gio. George, good morning to you. We're not entirely out of the woods just yet. The clouds you're seeing behind me are from the edges of Hurricane Matthew. Uh, but you know what? Jamaicans are looking at this with guarded optimism flooding that you just showed, George. We've had that flooding, some of that localized. Jamaica floods very easily. We've also had some dangerous surf, but right now it appears this island has fared well, but Jamaicans are prepared. I look around here behind me and I can see that these windows are boarded up. Jamaicans are prepared for whatever comes their way. But guys, I got to tell you, Jamaicans all tell me they are so concerned about their friends. Powerful explosion in Patterson. Take another look at the exclusive video. A security camera nearby captured the explosion. Wood and debris bursting into the air. The blast happening about 20 minutes after reports of a strong gas odor and a loud hissing sound. In all, two homes were leveled, 12 damaged amazingly. The 38 people in those multifamily structures on Goshen Street are all safe and accounted for tonight. 10 firefighters though did go to the hospital for evaluation. We have two reports tonight. We begin with Eyewitness News reporter Darla Miles at the scene. Darla? Sade, Diana, four of those firefighters are actually suffering from a burst eardrum. They were in the process of evacuating Goshen Street at the time of that blast. What you see going on right now is the demolition of that home, so the investigation into the cause can truly begin. I go by her and tell her, come out and call everybody come out from the house they say nobody here the house at 16 goshen street seems to burst like an overfilled balloon as seen in this exclusive surveillance video obtained by eyewitness news the dust smoke and debris raining down around 9 30 a.m on those on the street running for cover there was only one person inside at the time this older woman who neighbors say was initially hard to convince to come out of the front door she didn't want to come out She's there, he's told, get out of here because this, this is very dangerous. It's like, it was really loud. The Tuesday morning explosion that leveled two homes was preceded by a hissing noise so loud, neighbors two doors down could not tell exactly where it was coming from. When I opened the door, I smelled it's a lot of guys. I thought it was in my house, honestly, but I was like covering my nose, everything to so just you never know. But not long after the Camacho family got out and called 911, they saw their neighbor's house go up in a puff of smoke. We were walking to this side, and we just hear the explosion. Then we look back and we're like, wow. Uh, at this time, I got a uh, explosion of a two and a half story wood frame completely exploded. The blast so powerful, it not only leveled the house next door, it knocked out car windows and shook houses within a four block radius. That encompasses about a total of 100 structures. We do know of 15 that have uh, suffered some level of structural damage from either windows being blown out to other um, building material parts into other structures. Now, in terms of PSEG, they are still here on the scene. They have disconnected the gas still for all the homes on Goshen Street between Main Street and Getty while they continue this demolition. At this point, they say there were no reports of any gas leaks prior to this explosion. Again, that cause is still under investigation. Reporting live in Patterson, Darla Miles, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Okay, thanks, Darla. Darla, as you know, the debris field from this explosion is massive. Shannon Sohn is in Newscopter 7 for us over the scene right now. And Shannon, you can really get a good bird's eye view from up there. Yeah, and it is really something to behold. It is literally a pile of two houses where two houses once stood. Now, if you look right in the center of your picture, it's, it's really bizarre to see because you can actually see a laundry basket in the middle of all of this debris that used to be the homes. And then when you look down at street level, you can see what used to be the second floor windows of one of those homes literally sitting on Goshen Street. And of course, the house next door that has such severe damage to it. Now, you see a lot of that debris field across Goshen Street itself, but that is stuff that they are pulling out of the initial explosion and bringing into the street and still hosing down. So some of this debris has actually hit the houses on the other side of Goshen Street. Now, the debris field actually goes, if you look up one block to the north there, that is Grove Street and one block to the south. It's basically a four block radius in this area. 
Gold Street coming in to your picture there, damage to houses in that entire radius. So because of that, you need to know that Goshen is shut down between Main and Getty Avenue and even a little bit beyond that. This is where Getty Avenue comes in and you can see there's still some activity there getting in towards Railway Avenue as well. You're also going to find Gould and Grove shut down between Main and Getty with this investigation. But look at this picture as Captain Randy MP brings this helicopter around. Just a devastating scene here. You can't imagine destruction like this until you see a picture of this magnitude. Reporting live over Patterson, Shannon Sohn, Channel 7 eyewitness news okay thank you shannon as you can see the destruction from the explosion unmistakable take a look at this before and after picture of the epicenter of the blast you can see just how far that debris went flying through the neighborhood in all two homes are destroyed and 12 were badly damaged many of them getting inspected right now to determine the extent of the damage new jersey reporter tony yates has that part of the story tony Yes, yeah, Sade, you know, this is one of those cases when timing simply was everything. So many people called to report that gas leak. It was enough time to get neighbors out of harm's way. We called the 911. They came and they saw that after half an hour, like, big explosion. It's amazing that still so far it appears no one was injured in a blast that took out two homes. Emergency crews and neighbors have been going door to door to get people out before the blast happened. I came out. And I was went back in my house, got my dogs, and like five minutes after we were walking down the street, she was already in the corner with my dogs, and I just saw, I just seen the explosion. I turned around, I saw something flying out. The kids were already in school, but many families were home getting ready for the day when the knocks came to evacuate. So they said, get in, get them out, try not to turn on lights, um, try not to use the cell phone. And I told, yeah, so I took them out, I woke them all up and told them to get out of the house. I was going to go to work. And he said, I couldn't start my car either. Miller Rios has other family members that also live on the block. They will be out of their homes for a while while inspectors try to make sure the houses are safe. Inspectors also check stores along Main Street to make sure they're sound. The Midi Shopping Center didn't have to close at all. Yes, we open. Mm -hmm. they, they checked the place out. What do they said about, about the structural integrity of your yeah, It's okay. It's okay. The blast took out a number of cars. This one is Rafael Munoz's. This one belongs to Miller Rios. We didn't think it was, you know, that big of a deal. But then when we saw the explosion, of course, everybody, you know, with the dogs and people. I saw this guy with shorts on, with his pants on his hand. And What's not overlooked to some of these evacuated, this happened just as they were making their way to safety. I feel real lucky. For five minutes, would it take longer? Would have been in the damage. Now, Miller Rios lives at number 25. She says her dogs are still in the house. Her mother's medication is there, and she needs to get to the home, of course. Uh, she says she told emergency crews about this, and they're hoping to get her uh, back in her home at least within a few hours. For now, we're live here in Patterson. Tony Yates, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And we're going to go to ABC's Lindsay Davis. She's in the center of the storm in Port-au-Prince. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, Robin. We can really feel the wind. The rain is starting to intensify. It is clear that Hurricane Matthew is slamming into Haiti. The already deadly hurricane is now making landfall. Hurricane Matthew is now tearing through the Caribbean with life-threatening rain, wind, and storm surge. Thousands of people are bracing for one of the most powerful storms in almost a decade. Winds reaching 145 miles per hour, potentially flattening parts of Haiti, the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. We are starting to experience some strong gusts of wind. People in Cuba are preparing for the worst, boarding up buildings and filling sandbags. There are fears this morning that all this rain could be catastrophic. 40 inches of rain is expected to fall in parts of the island, potentially triggering flash flooding and deadly mudslides. Fears that entire villages will be washed away. The deadly Category 4 hurricane has already taken at least four lives across the Caribbean. The powerful hurricane is forcing major cruise ship companies to alter their routes. So the good news is that the eye of Matthew is still 100 miles or more east of Port-au-Prince. So that 40 inches of rain that was initially anticipated will now likely fall in the mountains. But 10 inches of rain is still very dangerous in Port-au-Prince, where you have more than 50,000 people still living in tents after that, uh, that uh, earthquake in 2010.
does. So easy to wipe them away. Okay, let's And we do say good mind. morning on this Tuesday. We're going to start with that deadly weather situation right now in the Caribbean. A catastrophic strike from Hurricane Matthew is imminent for Haiti and parts of Jamaica. You can see the massive storm on the radar swirling in the sea, packing winds of more than 140 miles per hour. Overnight in Jamaica, the outer bands of Matthew hit Kingston, sending wave crashing into the coast. Gas stations are closed as police rescue people and try to take them to higher ground. And we have this video from Haiti in the meantime, taken right before sunset. The sea is already rising, even with the storm well offshore. Three people have already died in the Caribbean because of the storm. And people in Cuba are also preparing for the worst by boarding up buildings and filling sandbags. The storm is then expected to head toward Florida's east coast. AccuWeather's Paul Williams is tracking the storm for us. Paul, what can you tell us? Good morning, Candice, Diane. We take a look at the latest, what we refer to as the spaghetti models. Well, most of the models are indicating that we're pretty consistent with it moving across eastern portions of Cuba, then right along the east coast, possibly skipping closer to North Carolina, and it'll re-strengthen to a Category 3 by then. In other news, we have severe storms expected throughout portions of Wichita, down towards Oklahoma City, and up close towards Omaha. Believe it or not, with this potential of hail and torrential downpours, this could possibly affect Matthew down the road. Candice, Diane.